Hi, it's John here from the nailschool.co.uk. Today I'm just going to have a, look, a little look at airbrushing. Now, airbrushing uh, was very, very popular at one time, but it has kind of gone out of fashion. But just recently, we've been getting a few requests to uh, do the airbrush course again, so maybe it's coming back. The sort of things you'll need to uh, get started. Obviously, you need uh, an airbrush machine and an airbrush gun. You need some paints, and these are specifically for airbrushing, and they are acrylic paints. This pair of gloves is quite useful, so you don't get your hands all covered in paint. And when you're practicing, you need some tips to spray onto. And we need a little stand here to actually put the tips onto so that we can practice our airbrushing. I put some paper down here so that I don't mark all my table. And when working in the salon, it's a good idea to just get a piece of A3 paper, laminate it, and put it down on your desk so that you don't get your desk covered in paint. I've also got some airbrush cleaner, which is kind of like fairy liquid and water really, but you can buy specific airbrush cleaner, which you run through the airbrush after you've finished airbrushing your client to keep the gun so that it doesn't um, clog up with paint when it dries. Got a pair of pliers here. Now those are quite useful um, for actually when you're doing maintenance on the air gun to undo the barrels and so on. So that's basically all that you need. Oh, blue tack. It's always useful to have some blue tack when you're practicing because you can use this to stick down your paper and you can also use it to stick down your mould here, your uh, stand I should say, when you're actually spraying on your thing so it doesn't move around. Because obviously you'd be holding a hand normally. Well a hand wouldn't normally wouldn't move unless you uh, unless you moved it yourself or they moved it. But um, with this if you if you're not if it's not secure when you're spraying it you can accidentally slip. Okay. Other things you need um, obviously are stencils and um, you can buy those, uh, there are many different types of stencils but we'll get onto that a little bit later. So basically all we're going to look at first of all is uh, the gun and the machine. So here we have a compressor and um, they come in many different sizes and shapes and prices and all sorts of things but basically what we've got on this machine or compressor here is we've got a gauge which measures the PSI of the amount of air pressure that's coming through the, the gun and it's usually set round about tw uh, 20 PSI. You've got um, a a knob here which you turn to adjust the pressure in the gun. You've also underneath here got a button here that you can press which actually releases uh, water from, that gets trapped in the, in the uh, water trap here. Now when, when air is under pressure it heats up which causes the water in the air to condense and the last thing you want really is water coming out the end of your gun and spraying onto the nails. So you've got this water trap here. Uh, as the air passes through here it pulls out the water and every now and again you have to empty this uh, valve here. Just press it up and the water will squirt out. So you need make sure you get one with a gauge on and with a water trap here. At the end here you've got the screw where the actual cable fits. And this has got like this one's got a coily wire on as you can see here. Now I like the ones with the straight wire to be perfectly honest. Straight um, cable. And that just fits on the end of here like so 
And then when you switch it on, which the switches at the back here, the um, the air comes out here, up through the gun, and then comes out through the front. Now this is a, a dual action gun. Only buy a dual action gun because that's what you require. And when you press down, it releases air. And as you pull back, it releases paint. So when you press down, it releases air. The air will be coming out the front of the gun. And as you pull it back, the more you pull it back, the more paint that will be released through the front. So you could, that's why it's called dual action, because you press down and you pull back. Now what you've got to do is you've got to get used to how much to pull this back, because the more you pull it back, as I said, the more paint that comes through. And that's something that you'll have to practice, because um, that's really important. But, but the press down part, um, always keep it just fully pressed all the way down. It's just this pulling back here that you need to get used to adjusting. And once you get the amount, right amount of paint coming through, you kind of like just freeze and then just keep it on that section, like on that uh, setting. Your paint goes in the little paint well in the top here. And this is a gravity feed gun. What that means is that is that as you pull back, the, the, um, the action of the air coming out the front creates some kind of a vacuum which pulls the paint out through the front of the gun. But it's just a gravity feed, that's why it's, it's on the top here. Now these are best for nails with a small well on the top because um, obviously you're only going to be using a few drops of paint each time. So when you... Um, if you've got it sort of a big, a bigger cup, it's 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 more uh, difficult to kind of like think how much paint to put in there. But a small well is good enough. So that's that's the machine, and these uh, range very much in different prices. Some have an extra tank built on top as well, and then what happens there is that the the machine here produces the compressed air and fills the tank on top and then the tank on top just delivers the air as you use the gun. That is an advantage because you, you're going to make sure you get a constant pressure coming out through the gun. Also it gives the air time to cool down a little bit so you don't get so much water developing in the uh, water trap. So um, that's why the um, the machines with the extra tank on top, they are usually more expensive. So it's up to you really what you want to buy. But you can just work with one of these. Especially if you're only doing, say, um, an odd set of nails here and there. But if you're doing like constant nails all day long, all day long, one after the other, then this machine is going to get very hot and you are going to get water build up in your tube here. Which, which means then you have to kind of like undo this like so, and then shake the water out or give the chance, the water chance to escape without going through the gun. It can be quite annoying, that can be, when you start spraying and the water splats out onto your client's nails. It's not really what you want. So if you can afford it, get one with the extra tank on the top. So that's the machine. Now I just want to talk a little bit about the gun itself. This one is a Badger, a Badger 100G. Now this is a very good gun, a little bit on the pricey side, usually about £90, um, and, but obviously you can buy a gun a lot cheaper. Now the only advantage of this kind of gun is that it really does come apart and you can, you, because it comes apart, you can get to all the areas of the gun. Now we've got, to, oh, that's decided to roll. Oh, there we go. So this is called the back barrel. Then we've got the little screw here. Don't undo it all the way, otherwise you might lose it. And then you can pull the needle out. Now the needle uh, here, we've got one here, which is for 
uh, for airbrushing nails. It's got a nice fine point on it, but they do come in different gauges. You've got um, this, the pushing part here, which presses down the air valve in there. Uh, try not to take that out. Uh, just keep a hold of it. But if you do take it out, you're going to have to fiddle about a bit to get it back in. Okay. Now you've got, uh, this is the well where the paint goes in. You've got the crown, which this is where my, ply my pliers come in. You've got the crown on the front, which just needs to adjust, undo. Now the crown itself, as you can see, is kind of like shaped like a crown. And you just need to make sure you keep this clean because it does clog up with paint a bit. And when it clogs up with paint, it will send your paint off in all different directions. So make sure you keep that clean. Then you've got this bit here, which um, again, you do get spanners in the kit normally when you buy a, when you buy one of um, an airbrush. But I find this, these are a little bit, oh dear, there we go. So we can undo this as well. Now what's important about this bit, is there is a, a tiny little white washer here. Don't lose that washer because that helps prevent air going back into the gun and then causing bubbles to build up inside your, your paint well. So don't lose that. You've got the pointy end here and when you put the needle in the needle should be able to come out through the end of this point. If it doesn't, it usually means that it's either blocked up or it's been crushed at some point or it's damaged or bent and uh, the, the needle won't be able to come out through the end. Now you can see that the needle on here is tapered as I mentioned to you. So as you pull back on the needle, because it's tapered, it will make the hole bigger here to allow more paint to come through. And that's basically how it works. It just comes through like that. So, what you can do, sometimes you can get the other end of your needle and just pull, I don't know if you can see that, pull out inside here any bits of paint that may have dried in there. You can also get you an old needle, I would do it with an old needle, and just push out through here so that you can see that the, the needle is coming through cleanly inside there. So, to get paint out of your well, you can get um, a set of brushes, to, which I'll find out and show you later, and then you can just clean out the well inside there with your brushes. But after every um, client you should be running through some nail brush cleaner to make sure that you try and keep it clean. And just get something in there and then spray it through and then clean it out. If you do have to um, soak this because you've let the paint dry in there, um, with it all together, uh, let's put it back together, so we put on the um, front section, like this again. I'm going to tighten this up, make sure I get it nice and tight. Put on my crown cap, which I've cleaned. Then I'm going to put my needle back in, which I will have cleaned as well. Acetone is a good way of wiping these clean. And make sure when you're pushing it in that you push it in straight. Don't bend it. Hold it down at the back so that it's well forward and then tighten up that screw just finger tight. Put your back back on. And then it should be all ready 
to use for the next time. Now if you have got all paint all kind of clogged up in here, you can soak this in some hot boiling water, but don't let the water come up past this point here, because otherwise as this paint dissolves you'll get all paint inside here and that can then clog up your air valve. So don't do that. You can undo this here as well and replace the air valve as well, but you know you shouldn't have to do that very often. But with this battery gun you can buy all these parts separate. And there's a company called shesto.co.uk S-H-E-S-T-O.co.uk and you can buy all the spare parts for this gun from there. That's at the time of making this video. Right, so there we go. And then of course the other end you just attach your hose onto this end and then it's all ready for use. So that's basically your gun. So you must keep this well maintained um, otherwise you're going to come to use it and it's going to be clogged up and then you won't be able to do your clients. Um, so make sure you use your airbrush cleaner to spray through at the end of every session until it is running clean. Right, the first thing I'm going to do here is just show you how to do a little practice session. So first of all, we need to switch on the uh, machine. And then we've got our gun here, which we can just check is working. Yeah, it is. So I'm just going to put in some airbrush cleaner. And then I'm just going to spray that out. Now obviously you wouldn't spray it into, the, into your client's face <laughs> or into the mid-air. I've got a bag down here, like a, a Sainsbury's carrier bag of some sort, and I've just taped it to the side of my um, my uh, desk. And I've um, taped it to the side of my desk, and I've just put some like tissue paper in the bottom so that it, it actually soaks up the, the paint. Right, so we've. What you must never do really is use your airbrush straight with paint in it when you haven't used it for a while. Make sure you put in some airbrush cleaner first, run it through just so it wets the needle and, and gets it all going. So we've got some paint here, I'm going to use black here so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I've got some black paint, I'm going to give it a good shake. And you can hear there's like a ball bearing in the bottom of there and that's to help to mix the paint. Now I'm going to drop some paint into here, one, two, three, four, five drops of paint there. And when I press down on here, the paint, the air is now flowing through, but the paint should not be coming out. As I pull back, the paint comes out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a square. So I'm going to hold this. Now, the distance you hold this from here is quite important. So I'm going to pull down and I'm going to start pulling back on the paint and I'm going to draw along like this, down this way, along like this, back up here and then there. Now I'm going to release my finger off there and I'm going to just uh, press on and then I'm going to, by altering the distance away from there, I'm working in kind of circles, I can get adjusting that distance all the time and the angle of the paint, I can uh, try and get a kind of filling on that square which is not really dense. Looks like I've used all the paint up. Right, let's put a bit more in. I can now just fill in that square with an even coat of paint. And that's what I'm trying to do, get an even coat of paint without too many white spaces showing. Now that would be like your first exercise. So I can now get rid of this piece of paper or I'll just turn it over. 
Next, what I'm going to do, I'm going to practice uh, with the airbrush uh, at different distances away from the paper and also at different, like different distances here away from the paper like this. The closer I get, the denser the colour will be. The further away I get, the more it will fade. And I'm also going to practice um, switching the paint off but leaving the air flowing. And I'll tell you why in a bit. So let's, here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is to pull the paint back and then draw a kind of a circle here like this. Stop the paint, but the air is still flowing. Now I'm going to move it with the air still flowing and I'm going to draw little circles like this. I've now switched the paint off by pushing the thing forward, but the air is still flowing. Now I'm going to draw another one here. Switch off the paint, but the air is still flowing. Now I'm going to just do an eyeball. Switch off the paint. Same here. Switch off the paint. Then I can now do the nose like this. Switch off the paint. Now you're going to be using this method of switching off the paint a lot during doing nails. So that's why it's important to get this technique going. Now we'll do some teeth. Switch off the paint. Next one, switch off the paint. The air is still flowing. Switch off the paint. And so on. And you can see I've got a lot closer now to get a more dense colour here. Now I can do some little twirlies like this. Switch off the paint. Come across the top. Switch off the paint. Bring the paint back on. And you can see what, now the air is still flowing. That's to make sure that I clean all the paint off the end of the needle before I put the, the gun down. Now the reason we need to do that is because if you leave, if you switch off the air and the paint at the same time, what will happen is that you'll have some paint resting in the needle section. And then when you go to your next nail and you bring the air on, it will shoot out those little bits of paint that are still stuck there. And you'll get a kind of like spatter onto your nail, which is something you don't want to happen. So now you can see we've got quite an amusing little diagram. I'm sure if you let your children loose on this, they'll have a whale of a time. So we've done two exercises there, this one here, and this one here. Both very useful exercises to do. And you want to keep doing those until you get them perfect. Now the next exercise, I've got any paint in there yet? The next exercise I'm going to do is to um, just draw straight lines. So here we go, come down, switch the paint off, air is still flowing. Switch the paint off, air is still flowing. Switch the paint off, air is still flowing through the gun. And then we can come back this way. Air is still flowing. And then I can draw little circles in here. O, X, O, O. Then I can draw a line through that. There we go. And the object of that was to get your control of doing an even line and also the, uh, the switching on and off of the paint flow through the gun with the air still flowing so that the next time you switch your gun on, which means you can then move to another place, switch your gun on and you don't get the paint spatter coming out onto the surface of the the paper or in which case it would be the nail. Now you notice I'm wearing a glove on my left hand, I'm right handed, um, and that's 
when we come to do the nails, you're going to get paint on your gun because what you usually do is before you actually go on to the nail, you will just test the paint flow through onto your hand before you move on to the nail. So let's have a look at a nail. So now we've uh, put that out of the way.